So the weight cancer connection, we didn't really know that there was a connection um, a while ago, and so now we're kind of seeing how important diet and exercise and being a healthy weight, how important it is and what the link is to cancer. Um, one out of every three cancers is actually linked to excess body weight, poor nutrition, and physical inactivity. Um, and so when we have all this excess fat um, through overweight and obesity, we're seeing that the immune system is not as functioning as well as it should. We have chronic inflammation, which increases our risk for cancer. Our, our certain levels of hormones rise, such as estrogen and insulin, um, become chronically high, and that can increase our risk for hormone-related cancers. And that proteins that influence how the body uses hormones also um, increase risk. So we're seeing a lot of different cancers that are connected, again, with um, overweight and obesity. Not every cancer out there, but these are the ones that we're seeing from studies um, and some, for some research that are clearly linked to cancer. Um, so breast is a big one, um, colorectal, endometrium, esophagus, kidney, pancreas. Those, are, those have a clear link. We, it's pretty clear from research that those cancers, being overweight or obese, can increase risk. Not saying that if you're overweight or obese, you're going to get those cancers. Um, it's just saying that we're seeing that it is possible that it increases our risk. And then likely raises um, for the cancers below. Um, not as clear link, but there is still some connection. And this is just a little um, blurb from the American Institute of Cancer Research. Um, and actually, after smoking, we know that smoking increases our risk for cancer, but directly behind that, the number one thing that increases our risk for cancer is being overweight or obese. So that's right behind smoking. And again, you can see all the different cancers that increase our risk. Um, just some statistics there of how many cancers they approximate every year um, from overweight and obesity. And basically, to protect yourself, move, move more and eat smart. So the update on the evidence, as I said, the AICR, the American Institute of Cancer Research, they're kind of our hallmark um, go-to institution that we look to for our evidence and for our guidelines because they do all the research for us. So um, they're looking at all the studies and they come up with the guidelines for survivorship and they show us what we're seeing can increase or decrease risk for cancer. Um, and they're the ones that first kind of discovered that there was a relationship between nutrition, um, physical activity and cancer. So I'll just go, kind of go through the current updates. So they do this thing called the Continuous Update Project. Um, they update and look through evidence on various cancers every year, so we're getting the most updated information to see what, again, increases risk, decreases risk, those types of things. Because things change, studies change all the time. One day, one thing's good for you, the next day it's bad for you. So we need to continually look at this research and the AICR does this for us and then puts out these guidelines. And you can go on to the AICR.org and look at these and see, and it even gives you into the future what they will be updating um, coming up. So you can see if it's your cancer, if you wanna see what the updated guidelines are. They also make updates for survivorship guidelines in general, if you're interested in those. You can go, again, it's the AICR.org. So in March, liver cancer was updated, um, and about 30% of liver cancers can be prevented by being active in a healthy weight. Um, and I'm just touching on the weight connection with all these different cancers. There's also other things that increase risk or decrease risk. For example, they found that coffee actually once a day decreases risk for liver cancer. So there's different things on there, not just things about weight, but I'm just kind of touching on the weight aspect of it. So in November of 2014, we see that 11% of advanced prostate cancers um, could be prevented by being a healthy weight, 5% of ovarians, um, endometrial 59%. So you can see they kind of range. Some are pretty low, um, but some are pretty high too. So, um, And so there is times when weight gain, um, where, where we see that a lot from different cancer treatments. Um, sometimes if you're on steroids, that can increase appetite, that can increase weight, medications that increase appetite. Chemotherapy, I know a lot of times people think it causes weight loss, but there are occasional times that it actually does cause weight gain, um, and some people do struggle with that. Fluid accumulation, not necessarily true weight gain, but um, the scale does go up with fluid accumulation. Cravings, fatigue, 
um, and you're just generally off and less active, especially going through chemotherapy when you are tired. Um, briefly just going to touch on weight loss because that is also um, important in the cancer connection which we often see during treatment, again, the nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, taste changes, appetite loss from the chemotherapy. Um, and just to briefly touch on that, any weight loss during treatment can negatively impact your treatment. So if you are experiencing any kind of weight loss, um, you're not getting as many nutrients in the body, slower healing and recovering, and decreased energy. Um, food gives us energy, so when we're not eating a lot, we're not getting the energy we need and something called cancer cachexia, and that's when patients just lose weight, lose weight, lose weight, no matter how many calories they're intaking um, because the body's just burning through them so much quicker than you can eat. Um, the loss of lean body mass, unfortunately, when we lose weight, a lot of times we lose lean body mass versus fat, which you wish you could take away the fat and keep the lean body mass, but that's not always the case. We don't get to choose. Um, and this is most commonly seen in head and neck cancer patients. And for Treatments for weight loss, again, if you're going through treatment, if you know somebody going through treatment, um, we really, even if you're overweight or obese, if you're going through treatment, we don't like to see any weight loss at that point. If you want to lose weight, wait till after treatment is the best time um, to start a weight loss program or focus on losing that weight. If you're in treatment, kind of just focus on eating well, not on weight loss. So some things you can do if you are experiencing any weight loss from treatment or before or after. Um, you need to just add nutrient-dense food um, to your diet. So adding cheese, peanut butter, avocados, even oil to foods will increase those calories. Um, I, always, I always tell patients, add a tablespoon of olive oil to everything. Um, it, you won't taste the difference, and you get up about 120 calories extra every time you add it. Eat small portions frequently, six meals a day. Um, every two to three hours, I encourage people to eat um, if you're experiencing that weight loss. Avoiding drinking with meals because you fill up your stomach, so drink between meals, and then often keep snacks with you. So that's basically just treatment for any weight loss going on.